good morning or good afternoon whenever you're watching this video in today's video we're going to create a beautiful quiz we're going to add custom headers or you can use the headers that they have in there I'm going to show you how to add a code so you can lock your test so that anybody can't just take it whenever I'm also going to show you how to add custom feedback either video feedback or link feedback and last but not least, I'm going to show you how to add your quiz into Google Classroom and schedule it so that it shows up for multiple classes. So if you're interested in any of this, just keep on watching. Alrighty, so we are starting in Google. Um, I am in my school Google, so Google for uh, Education. Um, I do recommend you use your school email, but if not, it will still work. So there are two ways that you can get to Google Forms. The first way is you can click the waffle and then just scroll down till you find Google Forms. The easier way is to do forms.new. All right, so once you go through the login process, before you do anything, you wanna come up here and name your form. So we're going to name mine um, Procedures Quiz. And once you hit enter uh, or tab, you'll see that this will automatically change to the same name. Now you could change this if you want, or you can leave it the way it is. So before we do anything, let's come to our settings and let's make some changes. So we're making a quiz, so you do want to select this. And then you have some options here. If you want students to immediately see their grade, then you wanna check that. If you wanna review some questions or you have some short answer, then you wanna click that. If all of your students are gonna be using Chromebooks, then you wanna turn on locked mode. What that means is they will not be able to open other tabs. But my students take my quizzes on whatever device, so I don't turn that on. Now, I do turn off missed questions and correct answers. And the only thing I leave on is point values because um, you need to be able to see the point. You need to turn that on so you can get a final grade. If you turn off point values, you won't see a total point or you won't get the student won't get a grade. All right. Then default question point value. You want to change this to if you have 10 questions, then this should be 10 points. If you got five questions, this should be 20 points. I'm going to leave it at 34 because we're going to we're gonna do three questions here. All right, then under responses, I don't mess with this because we want to do something else later. I don't send them a copy of their response because that's a security issue. I don't allow them to edit their response after submit it because again, a security issue. You see right here, it says restrict to users in your school district. Now you may not see the school, school district, but that's what it's saying behind that blur. I do check that um, because what that means is only only people who have the email address that your school has issued will be able to take this test. Now, I will say if it's at the beginning of the school year and everybody hasn't gotten their logins, you might want to turn this off until the second nine weeks or second six weeks or however you do that. I also turn on limit one response because I only want them to take this test one time. If you're gonna allow them unlimited time, uh, unlimited opportunities to take the test, then you can turn that off. Again, I don't turn on collect email addresses because it's technically already gonna do that, but you could do verify, which means they'll have to check it, or responder input, which means they're going to have to actually type their email in. Last but not least is presentation. I do usually turn on progress bar, which means um, they'll be able to see at the bottom how many more sections they have or how many more questions. If you want to shuffle your question order, you can select this. However, if you have questions that are dependent on a previous question, then you might not want to do this. So for example, if you have a part A and then a part B, then you might not want to turn that on, but I'm going to turn it on. All right, confirmation message. This means when they're finished taking their test, what do you want it to say? Right now, ours will say your response has been recorded. I usually leave it the way it is. I don't turn on show link to submit another response because once again, they can only take this one test. 
I don't turn on view results because we don't want them to see other people's results. I do usually turn on auto save if, uh, because if students suddenly get out or something happens, it will save their answers. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I leave this off so it will save their answers. If you turn it on, it will disable that, meaning it won't save their answers. All right, the rest of these are defaults for future quizzes. I'm not gonna do that right now. One more thing, we're gonna come up here to customize theme. And I'm gonna click over here in questions. And you can change your header, font, the question font, and then your options. So I'm gonna change all of these to my favorite, which is quicksand. And you can change it to whatever you like. Okay, so now I'm gonna put a header image in here. So choose image and I'm gonna go to my photos because I have headers already in there. You can create headers in Canva or you can purchase them. I'll link to the ones I purchased. So we're gonna pick one that we think is cute. Let's just do be a rainbow. All right, and hit done. So once you do that, these colors will reflect what you see up here. So I'm a girly girl, so I really kind of like pinks and purples, so that's what I'm going to select. So if you don't like these colors, you can just hit add. And if you know a hex code, you can put that in there. Otherwise, you can move this slider wherever. And I like this kind of purple here, so I'm going to click add. Once you do that, it will give you some background colors based on this. You cannot uh, change the background color, so you only have these options. I'm going to go with that one, and then we've customized it to look a little pretty. All right, so now, my first question is always name. So we're going to change that to name. And most people will do a short answer here. Let's change, click answer key. We want to make that zero points because that has no points uh, aligned to it. Now, right here, you can change this to be bold, italicized, whatever you want. I usually don't really mess with that. But for me, I prefer a uh, multiple choice here because I want all of my tests uh, to look the same. So let's type some student names in here and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's see what it's looking like so far. So to preview, you wanna come up here to this eye. And so this is what it will look like so far to your students. So you see at the bottom, this is that um, progress bar. If you had more than one section, it would say page one of two, three, four, five, however many. All right, so back over here. Okay, so then we're gonna click add question. Because I teach high school, I usually make this next question, period. And then this will also be multiple choice. And then once you type one, it will offer you some just suggestions. If you don't like them, you don't have to accept them. I'm just gonna accept them here. Click answer key. And most of the time, you don't want this to be any points, but if you want, you can change the amount of points it is. All right, so then here's a little trick. If you post your um, quiz to Google Classroom right now, any student can take it. So I like to lock my quiz. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So let's click add question. We're gonna type code. We want this to the answer key to be zero. It's not worth any points. And we wanna click short answer. And then here's the big thing. Click the three dots and click response validation. So then I select regular expression matches. And then you want to create a pattern that will be hard for the students to understand. Let me fix that in my bad. So we'll just use my daughter, KK23. Now, if that's gonna be, you wanna pick something that is gonna be hard for them to uh, guess. So this custom error text means if they get the answer wrong, what do you want this to say? So I usually type ask Miss Brown for the code. 
All right, before we move on, we want to add a section. And then we're gonna stop, we'll mess with that section in a second. So let's see what we're looking like so far. So click preview. So you see it shuffled those questions because we click shuffle. All right, so then if I select period, I'm gonna select I'm student one, and then let's say I type lowercase kk23 and hit next. You see it will not go anywhere because it has to be all caps. So however you type this in here, uh, or however you type your um, answer, it has to match exactly that. As you can see, there's a progress bar down here, and then if I try and hit next now, you see it will go on to the next thing. So let's go back here. All right, so in this section, this is usually my actual quiz, so I'll usually type the word quiz here. So now you have some options, because right now we're gonna actually make our questions. So you can import questions. So right here under add, here's import questions, and it will bring up every, every Google form you've ever made. So let's just say I wanted to go to this savings account. It's gonna give me the option to add any of these questions from there. And I can select all or I can select the ones I want. So we're not gonna do that in this video, but I did wanna show you that. What I do wanna show you here is that you could add an image or a video. So say you want them to watch a video and then answer some questions. So let's do that. We're gonna add a video and then we can just search. Let's just search procedures and see what we come up with. Procedures Classroom. All right, so we'll go with this two minute video here. All right, and usually I say watch the video and answer the following questions. Okay, and so now we wanna add a question. So let's say our first question is going to be multiple choice. And our first question is, what should you do when you walk in the classroom? So you have a couple of options here. You can make this multiple choice, short answer. I will go over all of these. So this first one, we're gonna make multiple choice. So we're gonna give some options here. So do now, um, wait for teacher, talk, to friends okay so those are their options so where the answer key is you can change the amount of points but what you want to do here is um, tell Google Forms which one is the right answer so let's just say this is the right answer you want to hit done now just as a tip that I learned in college put these in alphabetical order that way you are shuffling it without knowing you're shuffling shuffling it and you're not biased. So uh, we'll move this one here so that is in alphabetical order. All right, so now let's do a, we're gonna copy that, duplicate that question. And let's just say, what should you do after, what should you do second? Of course you wouldn't ask that like that. When you walk in the classroom. All right, we can make this one a checkbox. The difference between a checkbox and multiple choice is that the student can select multiple answers. So let's come to the answer key and maybe they can select two answers. Okay. All right. Now let's duplicate that same question and we're gonna just change this to third. And then you have the other option of a drop down. The drop down is just like multiple choice. It just saves kind of real estate. So let's do our answer key here and maybe wait for teacher is the right answer. Okay, so let's see what our quiz is looking like so far. So let's click preview. All right, so this is saved. So remember we selected, we did not select disable auto save. So if the student gets out of it, it is going to save their answers. If you're worried about security, you can select that and it won't save their answers. So let's come to next. 
So in here you see this video that they have to watch and then I can select multiple answers for this checkbox or not. In here I have this drop down and right here I just select an answer and then I can hit submit. But I'm not going to do that. Okay. All right. Now you can add another section or you can just keep going adding in questions. So let's just add another question here. And this time we want to do a linear scale. So on a scale of one to five, how comfortable are you with the rules for this class? Okay, so whatever question you want to type there. So again, this is a linear scale, so you're going to rate something. So in here, you're going to label it. So maybe one is not comfortable, and a five is very comfortable. Now, whether you can do an answer key here or not, you can make this points or not. This is more like a survey question, but hey. I'll leave it like that. Um, now, let's add another question. And this one will be a multiple choice grid. So in here, you want to put your options over in the rows and then um, what they're going to choose from in the columns. Whatever you put over here should be one or two words. So, for example, let's say rule one. Rule two, rule three, okay? And maybe rule one is no talking. Um, get hall pass when leaving room. And maybe the last option is uh, no eating. And again, we want to move these in alphabetical order. So no eating. And then these are already in order. Okay. You do want to select require response for each row. And I'll show you what that means. Now for your answer key, maybe you want all of these to be a total of 34 points. Or you can leave it like that. I usually want it to be a total of 34 points. So I'm just going to make this 11, 11. And I think... Okay, so rule one, let's say this is rule one, this is rule two, and maybe that's rule three. So that's your answer key that it's looking for. All righty. And then the last option, which is a, actually, let's delete that and let's duplicate this one. And this time we're going to make it a checkbox grid. The only difference is, once again, they can check multiple answers. So let's see our quiz so far. Click that preview. Again, it's saving those answers. And so you see I have this progress bar. So then moving on to the second section, it has all those answers that I've already answered. But remember, we have shuffle on. And so if I just select one, it's going to tell me, it's going to remind the student hey, you need to do, you need to select an answer in every row and it will not let them submit. All right. And then here I can rate how I feel. I'm not comfortable. I'm very comfortable. Maybe I'm very comfortable. And then boom, this is the multiple choice grid versus the um, checkbox grid. All right. So moving back over here. Now, just to point out here, you can always do a short answer question. How are you feeling? Um, which you will have to grade or you can do a response validation. Um, you can also change this to paragraph. There's not really much of a difference there. Your last option is you can do a file upload. So that means maybe they upload some kind of uh, attachment here. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Um, you can select what type of upload they have. 
So usually you want something specific. Maybe you want just an image. So we'll select that. And the maximum file size. Keep in mind these will drop in your folder. So you don't want too much. All right, upload a picture of you. Okay, something simple like that. Alrighty, so you have made your quiz. Remember, you can also add an image, a video, you can change the title and description, you can import questions, all of the things. All right, so let's look at this test one last time. Preview. And anything I haven't answered, so here, upload a picture of you, click add a file. Now I'm on a computer, so it's going to offer me these options. Let's say I wanna pull something from my computer, I can click browse and put any old picture in here. Now, I tried to put a GIF, it's not gonna let me put a GIF because remember, I said it has to be an image. And I don't have any images on here. Oh, okay, here's a picture of my daughter. All right. And so, boom. If I did not answer a question, it will not let me hit submit because we have required, it's a required question, which I did not show you. So let me show you that in a second. How are you feeling? Fine. Boom, I hit submit. And remember, we turned on for them to see their score immediately. So when I click view score, it gives me 58 out of 272 points. Now, the student can then scroll down and see if they got zero out of 34 points, obviously it's letting them know they got that question wrong. Whereas this one, they got 12 out of 12, so they know they got that one right. So that's what will happen if you have point values turned on. So, to make a question required, you're just gonna come here and click required or unrequired. Now I just wanna show you one more thing. So let's go to a question. So this question has a right or wrong answer. So for your answer key, you can add in answer feedback. So for incorrect answers, you could type an answer here. You could say, hey, check your syllabus. Syllabus, page one. Or another option is maybe upload a video that you want them to watch. So maybe that same video that they watched here. And then for correct answers, you could type great job. And so I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Okay, so let's turn that back off immediately after view. Okay, so when I click view score, and if I got that question wrong, it will offer me something. But you see, I got it right, so the feedback it gave me was great job. All right, so you have a couple of options. You can send this to a class, a student, if you want them to fill it out. The other option is you can go to Google Classroom, and we'll just go into my personal finance class under the classwork tab, create assignment. You wanna name it something, so we'll just name it procedures quiz. Come to your drive and it'll be in your recent. Again, if you wanna turn on lock mode, you can turn that on. I always turn on grade importing, which means it's going to pull the grade automatically in there. You can type some instructions if you prefer. Most of the children are not going to read those instructions, by the way. All right, now the due date is very important. So let's say I want the students to do this tomorrow by a certain time. If you click close submissions at that time, they will no longer be able to take that quiz. I love this. All right, I always put it in a topic, so let's just say maybe this is extra credit. Um, if you don't like that topic, you can always create a topic. And if you right click, like if you click control and then right click, you can put an emoji here. So let's put that one and say work. Okay. And then you can come here and schedule that. Maybe you don't want it to post at that time. 
You can also put it in multiple classes. So let's say I'm putting it in all of those and then I can schedule it for multiple classes. So you can come down here and set a different day. I usually put it on the same day. So select that one, due date. We're gonna put it in that topic and you can copy those settings to all of the classes you're gonna post it on. I'm not posting this, so I'm just gonna click cancel and discard that draft. Alrighty, you should have a beautiful quiz created really quickly. If you are in the um, preview mode, you can always come here to edit this form. And in your settings cog, sorry, in responses cog, you can always click link to sheets, which will easily put all the information from your test in a Google sheet. And if you click here, you can also click get email notifications, meaning you'll get response. Every time a student completes it, you'll get an email, which is very annoying, so I don't recommend. You can print your responses or you can delete responses. For example, obviously I wanna delete this one because that's not really a student taking that. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And share this video with any teacher you think might need it. Bye!